and the mongoose family that is the most comfortable with us, I would say, both on foot and from the vehicle. And I can still hear our ground horn bull. Sins, sorry to distract you. Can we just come out from the dwarf mongoose for a second? They'll still be there. What on earth is digging over there at the base of that? Oh, it's a dwarf mongoose. I could just see there at the base of that fallen tree. Oh, there it's popped out. I could just see dirt flying everywhere. I was wondering what on earth it was. Right. Here he goes. Sure, there's a lot of mongoose here. There's that one over there, there's one at the back, and then if we go back to Mount Mongoose, I don't know if this is the actual Mount Mongoose of the old days, but it is certainly at the moment a mountain full of mongoose. How many have we got here? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, that's 14, 15 in total that I've counted just very quickly. And this is exactly what I was aiming for. I figured if the sun was poking up over the horizon now, and it was starting to get warmer, I figured these dwarf mongoose would be out and enjoying their sunbathing session. Look at the ones fighting at the bottom. Oh, back they've gone down into the hole. Alyssa, you want to know, will mongoose take over active termite dens, or active termite mounds, or do they utilize only inactive ones? Look at these two. Oh, the dwarf mongoose sightings have been magic lately. Playful, playing with each other, chasing each other around. Sorry, Melissa. The answer to that is they usually utilize inactive ones. Nobody wants to get bitten by termites, not even a dwarf mongoose. Oh, look at this. They're having a proper game of chasing each other round and round the termite mound. One of them's doing some excavating as well. So they mostly utilize inactive ones. Sometimes what you get is you get them inhabiting an active termite mound, but an inactive part of that active termite mound. Does that make sense? Sorry, there's a helicopter flying over. That's what you're hearing. There's very, very strict rules regarding helicopter usage, so it must be a helicopter on official business. But yes, so sometimes you get sections of a termite mound that aren't being used, but the termite mound is still active, and then you'll sometimes find dwarf mongoose in there as well. Look at these two, look at these three at the bottom there having a proper cuddle and shift around with each other. Now, Byron the other day got out of the vehicle and sat with the dwarf mongoose, and he got to get very close to them. I'm actually quite tempted to do it with this group because I've managed to get very, very close to them on foot before. It's a group of mongoose that's probably the most comfortable with us because, as you know, we often start our bushwalks walking across quarantine and there's always people wandering up and down during the day. I wonder whether or not it might be worth a try. It's something I often just fell off the left. It's quite a steep termite mound. The reason that we can get off on foot with them is that they're naturally curious animals and if you sit quietly and patiently they habituate quite quickly. I wonder it's not worth trying. This is such a gorgeous... There's one grabbing its tail. Rihanna, yes, it is true that fork-tailed drongos will steal food from mongooses. Now, typically, they actually have a relatively mutual beneficial relationship. The drongo is alert and his eyes a bit higher than the mongoose and the drongo gets the scraps left behind. Now the recorded relationship between drongo and meerkats is actually where it happens more often. In times of food shortage, the drongo will give, imitate, because the drongo is a great mimic, will imitate the call, oh, big stretch and a sharp little teeth showing, 
will imitate the call of a meerkat, an alarm call of a meerkat, and the meerkats will drop whatever they're carrying and they'll run. And then the drongo can swoop in and steal their food. And I'm sure it happens to the same... or I'm sure it happens with mongoose as well, just probably not as often or as regularly because there's just more food here than there is in the more arid areas. It's not as hard to find something to eat. Dwarf mongoose actually have a far closer relationship with a different bird species called a yellow-billed hornbill, and a, to a lesser extent, the red-billed hornbill. And they will actually wait for each other. So one pair of hornbill, or one group of hornbill, will associate with one group of dwarf mongoose. They will provide alarm calls and warning signs if there's something that could potentially be a threat to the mongoose and vice versa, and then the hornbills get the scraps. And it gets to the point so much so where if the hornbills haven't shown up with certain groups or there's recorded cases, if the hornbills haven't shown up, the dwarf mongoose wait. And if the dwarf mongoose sleep in, the hornbills will actually go and call down into the entrance of the termite mound to try and wake them up. That's how close the relationship is. There's a couple of little babies here. I'm sure you've noticed that one on the right is a is a youngster. Bounce, bounce, bounce. Probably about I don't know six weeks, eight weeks old. Old enough to be accompanying the mongoose on their way out. Ali, you want to know if the mongoose will eat termites? Yes, absolutely, they will. Especially if you've got a population explosion of alates the reproductive members of the termite family that often occurs in summer. Look at these two scrapping. They're having so much fun. Sorry, hold on. Let's just stick with what's happening on our screen for now, and then I'll tell you about that. A mongoose wrestle. Young ones fighting each other, just like young elephants do, lion cubs do, leopard cubs do. Testing strength and practicing skills. Using the, Look how they use their tails to balance them when they stand on their hind legs like that. It's really cool. It gives you an idea of those needle-sharp teeth. But yes, when reproductive termites come out, they often blanket the ground in their extreme numbers. They come out in the thousands of tens of thousands. And absolutely, dwarf mongoose will come along and hoover that up, provided something else hasn't got there first, like a tawny eagle or even a hyena or a leopard. Everything makes use of those termites as a source of food. It's very, very important to help them gain their strength. Oh, everybody ducking for the safety of the holes, just in case that one mongoose that was running back was running from something. It pays to be cautious when you're only about 300 grams. Now, I've told you all about Goose, the mongoose that I raised. Well, partially looked after for a friend of mine. I didn't finish the job of raising her. But the one day, mongoose, or Goose was a banded mongoose. And she'd been taken because I, I can't remember exactly what happened to her family, but she'd lost her family for some reason. And banded mongoose, like dwarf mongoose, are sociable creatures. It's very difficult to look back into camera right now. Very, very bright. Um, and banded, banded mongoose form very close attachments to the people that raise them. I can't. I'm sorry. We'll have to keep looking at the mongoose. It's too bright for me. It's far too bright. Sun's very, very bright this morning. Um, and the one day I left Goose at home, wandering about, as she often did, and we were going to do some... I think we were collecting rocks to fix roads. And the baboons attacked the house that we were staying in and raided the dustbins and so on. And when I got back, Goose was utterly terrified and she shot up my leg and curled herself up into my jacket. It was midwinter then as well. Curled herself up into my jacket and she stayed there for probably about five hours, trembling. So it goes to show we don't think of baboons being a threat to mongoose, but they obviously are. There's obviously a natural fear there. So what do we think? Should we try this? I 
Uh, we've s before I jump out and see whether or not these mongoose will let me get close to them, Red, you want to know if mongoose run the risk of drowning in their termite mounds if there's heavy rain. I suppose it does happen, especially if there's very young mongoose in the burrows, but I think it's highly unlikely. I think you'll find they've got tunnels and shelves that will put them out of the reach of the rain. Did you see something there, Sins? No. What do we got there? Mongoose. Hello. Well spotted, eagle-eyed Sensor. <laughs> see? I bet we can get close to these ones. I think of all of them, this is probably the best bet. Hi, little one. What are you doing? How did you even get there? This is where termite mounds come in useful as well, or termite networks, because there's tunnels underneath the surface of the ground that run for meters and meters. So it's a really useful way of moving between places if you need to. Now, Jerry, you wanted to know what the interior of the dwarf mongoose termite mound looks like. I would guess and say that it looks, it has the same network of tunnels that the termites have used, but probably just broadened for the comfort of the mongoose. I know that they sleep in chambers all cuddled up together, not necessarily the entire family in one chamber, but certainly quite a few of them. All grouped together, keeping each other warm, particularly on these cold winter nights. Do you have a cobweb on your nose? Yes, you do. It's the one downside, huh? Can't be afraid of spiders if you're a dwarf mongoose. They're so often covered in cobwebs. I'm going to try it. You know what? I'm going to try it. This one's going to duck down as soon as I get out. And Senzo will just let me know if Megan wants a link or anything. As soon as I get out, whoops, where's my microphone gone? Oh no, it's there, safely tucked away. I nearly, I nearly smashed it yesterday. I don't want to get into trouble. Now they're gonna duck into their holes now, which is fine. Let's see how to gauge this. Oh, what I didn't think through. Wet ground. I'm just gonna sit patiently for a second or two. I can already see heads popping out. Hey, little guys. Senzo, can you see the one at the bottom there? Cool. So now I'm not even gonna look at them. Not even gonna pay them that much attention. Gonna look elsewhere. Let's see. Hi guys. It's something that I've always wanted to spend time on. Habituating them to the point that we could actually follow them around on bushwalks. In the same way that they do when they film me a cat manor and all of those research projects. And people do, for research purposes, they do habituate mongoose to the point of getting to within a few meters and sometimes even to the point where they can be handled. Not that we would ever, ever do this on these live safaris because that would be for us rather than for the good of the animal. But for researchers, it's actually quite important because for researchers, by weighing them, they can actually test their urine, they can learn a little bit more about their reproductive cycles, they can weigh them, see how much their weight changes. There we go. They've now resumed their behavior com almost completely normally. Babies are coming out. The ones are playing, you can't see them, but they're behind the termite mound playing. See? Space of a minute. Here we've got them to come out, including the babies. How lucky are we? 
Hi, little ones. Hi, little ones. Oh, but you're so cute. They're not even looking at me. Yo, I reckon this would be a very easy group to habituate. I bet you, which I'm not going to do now, but I bet you if I sat here for half an hour, they'd be foraging around me. No bothers at all. As long as I sat still and didn't do too much moving or too much focusing on them, I'm pretty sure that we could get them right up to us. Hey, little chaps. Oh, they're playing and everything. It makes me feel okay about the whole process because you're not changing their behavior actually, really in any way. They were in their termite holes for a minute and now they're back out sunbathing and playing. Okay, just a test. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to turn my back. They'll be out in a second. Hear their little squeaks. I didn't think that through. I'm going to sit down with a really wet bottom now. Oh well, worth it. I have to say, I'm quite tempted to just sit there for the rest of the morning. You can watch the, <laughs> you can watch the sunrise. Well, sun has risen. I'll just sit here and enjoy myself. Marvelous news, I thought I heard the sounds of Wendy's engine. It seems as though I was correct and Taylor's back. I'm so happy to be back too. And Jamie, I hope that you've had lots of fun trying to habituate that 